Hello there, my name's Vince, and in this video today we're going to be trying to fix up not one, but two Ninja food processors. So these will chop up your carrots, or also blend your smoothies as well. So Ninja is a very popular brand here in the UK at the moment. I bought these both 40 from eBay as part of a bigger job lot, a £200 job lot. These probably work out to be about £10 or £15 each, and luckily they're both 40 So I'm going to plug them in to this little safety switch and just show you what they're doing basically this one is not spinning this one doesn't have the lights lit up only some of the lights are lit up so this seems to have a problem with the front display here but it does turn this one doesn't turn at all but yet the front display seems to be okay so i think it should be quite interesting because they both look like nearly new products so i'm quite curious to find out what's actually failed on them let me get the camera on the tripod and just show you what they're not doing Okay, so on this one here, you can see it does turn on. This basically means that it doesn't recognize that there's a jug on top. Unfortunately, I haven't got any jugs to go with these or any of the smoothie cups either. Now, I was trying to work out how this knows what's on top and it does it via load of micro switches. So basically, we have a micro switch here, 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 and here. So if I press in here, you will hopefully be able to hear the micro switch. Now, when I press that one down, you can see it doesn't change, but yet when I press this one on this side, it does change, yeah? And if I keep my hands well clear, if I go to pulse, you can see it's not doing anything. These just blank out a little bit here as if it's drawing too much energy. And it doesn't matter what combination that I do. So I, for example, I can press this down here and I can press that one down there. And there you go, it doesn't like that one. It doesn't like that one there. I can press all four down. It still doesn't do it. So it doesn't matter what combination I do, I can't get this one to spin. So I think that's going to be quite interesting. It seems to be some sort of power issue. Maybe the motor. I'm just unplugging it. Hold on. It's unplugged now. Maybe the motor is somehow seized up, even though this spins lovely and freely on the top. Now, with this one here, basically, it does work, but yet, the lights don't light up properly. So right now it doesn't recognize anything on here because it's got micro switches again. So it's not allowing me to do anything. But if we put one of these in here and one of these in here, there we go. You can see now that this thinks that there's a little smoothie maker on it. So it allows you to blend and extract and pulse. But look, the start stop light's not on. And also it doesn't allow us to do this auto IQ thing. There should be little lights for yes and no. I can feel the buttons, but there's no lights being lit up. And now if I was to hit the micro switch at the back, it would mimic the bigger bulby on it. For example, if you wanted to chop up your carrots and can you see that these two have lit up here now, but look, chop hasn't lit up. So it looks like we've got light issues on chop, the yes, no here, and start, stop. But if I was just to pulse, just to show you for a second. There you go. Turning that off, I'm not doing that anymore. But you can hear that, that that is turning there. So uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be an interesting one. Why is this not turning? And why are the lights not working on this one here? Let's bring them over to the mat and see if we can fix them. Okay, I think we're gonna start on this one here and find out why this is not spinning. Now, just to be clear, do not copy what you see in my videos taken purely for entertainment. Earlier on, when I was putting these in here, I was making sure my hands were nowhere near here. Obviously, these are not blades, but you could still get a nasty injury from them. The blades are contained in the jugs to actually chop up the food, but it's still not safe to work on something like this. So please do not copy what you see in my videos. Now, this one here is model number BN750 UK 30. So let's uh, take it apart and see if it becomes clear what's happening. We have various different screws at the bottom here and they look like they are, yeah, they're Torx and they're security bit as well. So it looks like they're Torx 10 and they need a little hole in them to get past the little security bit. Obviously I am unplugged when I'm doing this. Right, all those screws look the same. Is that going to take the bottom off? Yes, it is. Okay, well, that's all very, very clean. So now, what have we got here? We have got 
The mains coming in, we know the mains is working. They go into here, which I presume is just a connector. Or is there something fancy in here? No, that's just a wire nut, so that's just a connector. I suppose so they can put on different plugs for uh, different countries. So there's nothing to do with that. Right, and then both wires go up into up here somewhere. So we have more screws here, 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 and here. And then I think this bottom bit should come out and that might give us more access. Okay, that one's stuck in there, but it's undone. So they're for Phillips screws. Now, is this gonna come out here? So it looks like we're gonna be a bit restricted. Let's pull these out. And here, that'll give us a bit more room. There we go. Ah, right, okay, I can see a bit of water damage, liquid damage here. Here's the other screw. Okay, so it came through to here. Everything looks immaculate though, apart from that little bit there. So, where is the motor? What's going on here? Uh, oh no. I bet that's some sort of weird thermal fuse you see just there. I bet that's a thermal fuse. There should be a resettable one. I think it said, let me get the instructions. It said something about leaving for 30 minutes and then going back into it. Right, resetting the motor. This unit features a unique safety system that prevents damage to the motor and drive system should you inadvertently overload it. If the unit is overloaded, the motor should be temporarily disabled. Should this occur, follow the reset procedure. Unplug the unit from the socket, allow the unit to cool for approximately 30 minutes, remove the container's lid and blade assembly, empty the container, ensure no ingredients are jamming the blade assembly, ensure that the maximum capacities are not exceeded. This is the most typical cause of appliance overload. Well, in this instance here, it's definitely not overloaded because we haven't got anything on here to overload it. I'm thinking that that must be some sort of thermal resettable fuse down there and maybe that's not doing what it's supposed to do because this thing looks like it's had very, very little use. Okay, now how am I going to get further into it then? Really I could do with taking this off, how do I get this off? Oh, okay, there's clips, I think. There's clips just down in here. It's very hard to get the clips, they're very strong clips. One done. There we go. Right, you have to, uh, you have to basically, there's two little clips here. Hold on. Am I even going to be able to take this out? These two clips here, here and here. And they just go on to here, these two bits. Right, okay, well that's definitely given us a lot more access. Let's look at this fuse. So we, and not, ah, oh, hold on a minute. We've got broken stuff here. What's going on? And that looks as brittle as could be. Was that me? Let's have a look at the clips. Clips are intact. That's worrying. Where's that come from? Where has that come from? So there's a bit of rubber glove there as well. For those that like to play along at home, see if you can spot what the problem is before I can spot it. It is fairly obvious when you look closely. So these are all the micro switches.
four of them. Two small ones at the front here. So before we worry about that thermal fuse type thing, let's just make sure the micro switches are actually working. So we've got three wires going to each one. Sorry. Right, so I'm on the outer two, and that's going off now when it's uh, not on, so it must be that one and that one. Let's see now. Yeah, and is it this one and this one? No. So, when nothing's happening, it's on the outer two, and then when it's being pressed, it moves on to the, uh, the red one and the black one. Right, so we know that that's working. Let's do the same here. Nothing happening there, and then press in. That's working. Ah, look at that, broken wire. Excellent, broken wire. Pat yourself on the back if you spotted it before me. Wow. Well, maybe it's not the thermal fuse then. Look, we've got a broken wire here. Unless that was me just now. What have we got on this side? Yeah, because look, we've only got two wires on that one, yet we've got three wires on this one here. And where does that go off to? That goes off in this direction, over to here. I think therein lies the problem. So let's solder this one back on. I bet you that's the only problem there. I love it when you can see a fault like that. So I have a quick look at the little switch and I do see that there is some sort of liquid damage on it. It looks a little bit brown on the inside. So I uh, need to solder it back on and I'll just use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to give it a clean. And then we can put this back together and we'll see then if it is gonna work. This whole thing looks immaculate. It looks like it's had very little use. We found the problem and also it, it, it makes sense. If the micro switch isn't detecting that something's on the top, we know it's not gonna work because it's a safety feature. It doesn't work unless the correct jugs are placed on top. And it doesn't know, does it? So uh, yeah, let's just get it soldered up, put it back together, and this one should be working. See, this is why I like buying from this seller named Ben. He does watch the channel. It's because they're honest fixes. I've had quite a few now that are just like this. Yes, there's others that are unfixable because not everything is fixable, but at least if you're the first one in there, you're gonna have a higher success rate than if you're the third or fourth one in there because all the easy fixes have been put back into circulation working again. So yeah, I thoroughly enjoy these ones here because you get to see what real faults are out there which is uh, ideal. Anyway, it's back together now. Let's give this thing a test. Okay, I'm just gonna watch back the video to make sure we have got that gap around there that we started with and then wash my hands because they're particularly dirty. And then uh, we'll test it, see if it works. Okay, I'll watch back the video and there certainly is a gap down here. So it's all as it should be. Let me plug it in. Is it gonna work? I think it is. So we've got that there. Now, if I do this here, let's just see what happens if I do one. So it still doesn't recognize it with just the right hand side. Let me try the left hand side. Or oh, the left hand side. That's different than it was before. So now let's put this in here. There we go. Now, let's see, are you going to work? Pulse. Yes! Result! Blend. Then it goes off and it goes again. Fantastic. I believe you're not supposed to run them if you haven't got stuff in there. Maybe they uh, spin up too fast. Fantastic. Right, now let's see what happens if we had the bigger jug thing on. That goes off there. Please come on when I put this one down. No, so I wonder what these ones are for. And there's definitely micro switches there. So let's uh, undo those two. Now let's do these. Ah, no, sorry, there. And here, hmm. Ooh, do you know what? I wish I tested all the micro switches now because part of me wonders if there's still a fault with these outer two ones. Oh no, I think I'm gonna to have to take it apart again because uh, my curiosity 
I'm going to be I'm going to be thinking because why we've got two micro switches here and they don't appear to be doing anything unless it's a combination. One second, that I haven't tried. So combination here, so there, here and here. Ah, here we go. That could be it. Look, that could be it. There and there. Result. That's it, isn't it? So why we've we got a micro switch this side? I wonder. Let's see what happens when we go in this side. Oh, works that side as well. Brilliant. Luckily, I didn't take it apart again. Now, let me just put it in this side and see what it's doing. So we're in here. Now, let's see if it works here. No. And no. So it's that left hand switch, which is the important switch. Fantastic. Well, I am more than happy with that. What a nice little honest fault. But more importantly than that, a fault that anybody can fix with a soldering iron and with eyesight. So uh, really happy. That's that one. That one. And pop this one in. So it looks like it's got a bit of a break because when this popped out there, it went off quite quickly. Brilliant, so everything is working there. So if I get a jug for that and the blades and stuff, it's gonna be working. Now, in reality, by the time I buy all those jugs and blades and stuff, you'd probably be cheaper just to get a working machine. But I might be able to get aftermarket ones. Hopefully the third party ones are gonna be cheaper than the Ninja ones. So that's it, if you're having problems with your Ninja machine where it's not turning, then it might not be motor related, it could be micro switch related. So hopefully this video might help others out. Well, let's move on to the other one and see why the LEDs are not working because I think that's a more confusing fault because normally LEDs are very reliable. So what is it on the board why some of them are not working? What's happened? Hopefully we can fix that one too. Right, okay, we have the model number here as NN100UK, and then space 30. We get we have the uh, talks again, security, security ones. So it's consistent. Whenever I see these, it reminds me of an old Star Wars thing I used to have. Really liked it. I think it was uh, Bosch or something, the Bounty Hunter. That's probably not how you pronounce his name. And uh, it was this little spaceship, and it had these arms at the front that could grab onto something. No, sorry, it had arms that used to suck to the wall using these, and then it had these claws that this kind of like machine metal, but plastic claws that come out, and then it used to grab a figure and put it in here, and then you could fly around. I love that thing. But what would happen is you'd suck them onto a window or something, and they'd stick. You'd walk away and 10 seconds later you'd hear a crash <laughs> and then it would land on some like rubbishy ornament underneath and knock that to the floor flying. And you'd have to try and blame it on your brothers. That was nice of me, wasn't it? Don't worry, I was the youngest, they were older, they could take it. The members of the My Mate Vince Massive, quickly change the subject, <laughs> members this month are kipdigital.com at Kip Hakes and Max Rokotansky, Chris Seal, Felipe at mrkeebs.com, DJVG, Pigsy, Anthony Dean, and Baza2, Russ Melanson, Gaspar Heller, Ricard Berglund, Soul Reaver555, the My Mate Vince fan club, Astral Red Panda, Shamsa Al Sawadi, and Sholo Bradford Blackmore. Such a great name, that. Sholo. Never seen that name before in my life, but I like it. Anyway, let me show you now how to get on to this little display board at the front. I think we need to get this main board out here. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's undo these two screws. You never know, this whole thing might slide, uh, might slide downwards. Oh, here we go. Is it going to come out? Is it being held in up top? I think that will come out, you know. 
I think that will come out. There we go. Result. Excellent. Okay, so now uh, I can just undo these and maybe see what's happening. So we have three cables going up and a big ribbon cable. Let me just see where the three cables go off to. Oh, a micro switch. That's one of the micro switches. And the black is another micro switch over here. So this board is connected to the micro switches. Okay. Well, unless somehow it could be related to that, but these have all got paint on them as well. If you're wondering where the ribbon cable goes, it just goes down to the main power board that I had to undo the ribbon cable earlier on just to allow this machine to come apart. Oh, wow. Okay. Here we go. Right, straight away, I can see there's a little bit of rust just here. We won't look at the other side just yet, but maybe it is water damage. You see just here? Yeah. Here as well. Right, let's flip the board over. And see what we got. You ready? Now. Yeah, look, there's water damage there. And there's uh, maybe a bit of water damage there as well. So I wonder now, maybe if it's taken on the kind of negative from one to another to another, if this was corroded here, maybe the path stopped and that's why this is not working and these two lights are not working and this light here is not working. Interesting. So first of all, what's this up here? Yeah, that's some sort of liquid damage here. Okay, but the switches do appear to be working. So now, ah, uh, look here. So have we got a diode next to each light? Yes, we have. Not that one though. No, we haven't, sorry. Okay, so the LEDs are all labeled up here. All right, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's get a reading on the LEDs and see if we can light them up with the uh, the multimeter. So we're gonna go on to diode test, and that normally puts enough voltage in to get an LED to light up. So let's just see one that's working. So we know that the pulse, I think, did work. So first of all, I just wanna go across here, see if I can see it, then I'll show it to the camera. No, unfortunately, so that didn't work. It's probably because it's in circuit. So what I'm gonna do is we can physically see that the LEDs are rusted, but yet the board itself looks very good, really. Where all the components are on the traces, it all looks very good. So I don't think it's a case that the traces have been eaten through. It just looks like maybe the LEDs themselves have rusted through. So I'm gonna use my desolder station and I'm gonna remove the four LEDs. Let's see if they read anything out of circuit, the 440 ones, obviously. Right, so I'm thinking that if they're blown, they shouldn't read a diode, should they? So let's see, so this is on the black lead on the big part, and there's nothing there. Red lead on the big part, ah, there's nothing there. These have gone. Black lead on the big part, nothing there. Oh, hold on. No, nothing there. What I'll do is I'll take out one more, a working one, and see if we've got a reading. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing. And nothing. What a shame. Oh no, I thought they were actually, I thought it was actually gonna be fixable. Right, let's uh, take out another one, a known working one, and see if that's measuring different. While that's heating up again, I'm gonna get some isopropyl alcohol and just clean up the rust from here. 
I suppose water's just sat on the base there and it must have just shorted them out. Or whatever the liquid is that was spilt. This is what I'm using. So we're going to do black probe on the big one. Ah, oh, look, it's lighting up. Ah, so it is lighting up. See that there? Oh, I'm gutted. Yeah, so when I put the black probe on the big contact on the inside, I can't remember if it's anode or cathode, but yeah, it works. Ah, uh, well, okay, we've proved what the fault is. Now, what... Uh, so, uh, obviously I can't fix that, can I? I don't even know how an LED works. I'm just gonna give it a little wiggle just in case somehow the rust has made a bad connection just as it meets the body of it. Don't think so. No. Okay, I am going to, just again, just in case, because I uh, I appreciate what's happened is water's got there and it's probably just sat there and then uh, shorted it out. But just in case it was more rust-based, I wonder if I was just to poke through and hit the anode and cathode directly, whether something would happen with my needle probes. Let's have a little look. So if I was to go through to here, you know what I mean? Then I'd bypass all this horrible rust here. Yeah? Wonder, can I get through there? Let's shoot, let me use my soldering iron. Burn through it. Let's go on to here. I think I might be through. Right, let's do the other side. I think I might be through there as well. Imagine if it's sprung to life. That's definitely on the metal. I can feel metal against metal. You can see it as well. And let's go here. And that's metal there. Right, okay, here goes. I think I'm on it. No. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure how what you know what happens in here, whether there's tiny wires that link up the two or whether there's uh I'm not sure. I don't I see I don't actually understand how I know it's a diode, light emitting diode, but I don't know what that actually means. Yeah, well I'm on there now and there's uh unfortunately there's nothing happening. Right, okay, well, so it looks like they're white LEDs. You know, I'm going to watch back the beginning of the video because I thought they were red. But so they're certainly white there. Now, I've had a little look to see what I've got. 
Bought these off eBay thinking they were normal size LEDs. Got them about a year ago. Really cheap and I can see why. <laughs> Look at the size of them. They're absolutely huge. Never seen anything like that before. So they're a no-go unfortunately. Now I've got these tiny little SMD ones and these are supposed to be white. So maybe they might work or would they leak light too much through? Let's have a look on this side here. Now where is it? Here. They're not going to leak light through are they? Because they're each in their little container. Each in their little home. There'd be a bit of light, light leakage because the LED is designed. Oh, it's designed to actually go in here. Oh, that's annoying. It is designed to go in here. Yeah, it's not going to be ideal, but it could. It could work. I, I know I can buy it. I know I will be able to buy them, but it'd be nice if I could get them, if I could find something to work. Now, these are going to be too big, but interestingly, some of these have like bigger holes. So maybe I could swap some LEDs around because they would squeeze in there, but they definitely wouldn't squeeze in there. When you press these in, what's actually pressing? Oh, it's the edge here. It's the edge here. So I don't, yeah, do you know what's happened? If I was to put something in that was too big, it's going to stop the button from pressing. Yeah, so I don't think they're an option. So in this instance here, you can't use something too big because it's going to foul the button from being pressed in. So I've got to go with the SMD ones. Obviously, the best thing to do is to buy proper ones for this purpose here. But I tried to buy them on eBay before and they're the ones that arrived. And then the other ones that are going to arrive are just going to be kind of bog standard ones that you get everywhere. The LEDs in this machine here are smaller than normal LEDs that you get in like a kit, a, a kid's toy kit, you know, the standard LEDs you get, the cheap ones, they're a lot bigger than these ones here. Not a lot, but partially bigger than these ones here. So yes, I would be able to buy the proper ones from somewhere like RS Components, but I think I'm going to solder in the SMD ones and let's see if we can get away with that. If they work, they work. I can always buy the proper ones at a later stage, but I don't think I'm going to need to. Through hole would be easier, but if I can get the SMDs in, then why wouldn't they work? It's a white LED. It's just in a different form factor. Ooh. Well, remember, that's just with my uh, leads. So uh, I think in circuit, I reckon they'll be as bright as the others. And you can see they're definitely white. I'm just doing what I've got here to do. Obviously, the best thing would be to get the proper ones. But uh, I haven't got the proper ones. So let's do these and see what it looks like. So now, how oh, how am I going to do this? Because it's the, it just gets harder and harder. So I'm going to have to put legs through and then solder the legs onto here, aren't I? I'll do one on camera, I'll do all the others off camera. And I'll put the good LED on the power light because the power light's going to be on all the time, isn't it? Oh, how am I going to know which way? Oh, one second now. I have to work this out. So it was big lead. It was the red lead to the big one, wasn't it? To make it light up. So let's get our working one, which is here. And the big lead. Right, black lead to the big side makes it light up. So if we do this one this way round, does that make it light up? Yes. So that side's going to be the big one. If I do it this way, it's not going to work. Okay, so that side's going to be the big one. And the big one is on the right-hand side. Fine, okay. So it has to be on there like so. So let's bend, bend this out a little bit. Put this on. Oh, 
whoops, I got it the wrong way around now. Hold on. So the big one is that side there. This is all a bit confusing. I'll come back, come back. When I keep saying big one, I basically mean the big part of the LED on the inside. I've Googled it now and it's the cathode. The negative is the cathode and the cathode is the big part of the LED. So that's what I mean when I keep saying that. Just gonna go that way around. Right, so if I put it like that, I think this is gonna work. So let's bend that up a little bit. Well, right, let's try to solder that on there and see what happens. Don't know if that's actually stuck or not. I think that one's stuck. Remember the pads are underneath it. There we go. That's gonna have worked. Now, does it matter that it's not perfectly aligned? Let's give it a little turn. Look at that. That's all right. Let's cut off the excess. And here. Let's give it a little clean up. Oh, and I forgot to tell you the price. These are 12p each excluding VAT. So £6 excluding VAT. So £7.20 for 50 of them. So you can see that that doesn't work out much. What's that? About 14p each or something? So, uh, yeah. If it works, it's not going to cost much. To, it's going to be under a pound to get all this done. So I'm going to put the good LED on the power button because that light is always lit up. And then I'm just going to put the surface LEDs on all the other ones that have failed and also where I took the good LED off. Now let me show you when all the soldering is finished. Right, we're done. That took about 15 minutes. Not too bad. It's quite therapeutic. Uh, of course, I did it all first time because I'm just amazing at soldering because uh, I'm a YouTuber, so obviously everything that I do is absolutely perfect. Yeah, right. One, two, three, here as well, and I think there might be others. Basically, it's amazing how quick they turn to scrambled egg. Put your soldering iron on that just for a little bit too long, and it's just blah, 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 blah. It's just like a, a melted pot of uh, yellow goo. So, uh, but I am actually very happy with these ones here. And I was testing every single one, but I didn't need to, because I noticed on my very last one, which is irritating, that there's a little corner taken out. You might not see past my melting, but there's a little corner taken out on each one, and that denotes the side that needs to go to the big side, whether that's anode or cathode, I can't remember. But have a look here. So if you have a look, can you see? Little corner bit taken out, little corner bit taken out, little corner bit taken out, just here, just that tiny little bit there, and here as well. So look, you can see now that that is actually nice. So we've got a lump of solder there and a lump of solder there. Remember, these have their contacts underneath. Here and here, again, they're gonna be soldered underneath. Here and here and here, here, and here. This one is a little bit burnt. But I think it's okay, because it was only, it didn't get this part here, it just got that part there, so it should be it should be fine. So I think that is gonna be okay, and I think this will be a successful fix. So I'll put it all back together, and now let's pick up the video. When it's back together, we'll see if these lights light up, and are they actually bright enough? to be able to see them light up. Will they look anything like the original LEDs? Right, we are done. Let's see, is it gonna light up or is it gonna be as dim as dim could be? Oh, it's on about the thermal switch on this bit here. Okay, well, I'm plugging it in now. Right, and it's come to life here. Let me 
see if I can get these lights to light up now. Let me get the plastic things. Yes, look here. Can you see the little yes light is lit up and the start light. And to be fair, I think they look as bright as the others. No way. Right, let's see if no works. Yes, it does. Okay, no's not quite as bright. Or is it just a light? I mean, you can definitely see it. Look at that. Fantastic. Right, and then if we press this, do the others come alive? What do I have to do now? How do I get the others on? Ah, oh, I've forgotten already. Oh yeah, here. Ah, oh, result, look at Chop. Right, so Chop and Doe are not quite as bright as, I'm gonna say Puree, it's Puree, isn't it? Puree. So uh, yeah, result, and look at that one there, that's particularly bright. Oh, of course that's bright, because that's the real one. All right, well, do you know what? I think that's good enough. Excellent. Right, I'm just going to do it for a second, make sure that's still working. There we go. Result. And let's go to yes, make sure it works on that. Fantastic. Oh, I'm very happy with that. I really am. And check this out here, I'm so happy with that. Fantastic, what a result. I'm loving those lights there. I hope they're coming across in the camera. Hopefully you can see them there. Obviously I've got a studio light on it. So a massive thanks to Ben for letting me know that these were for sale. And uh, I'm looking forward to looking at the other items in the job lot because for me personally, I love to be the first one into something because it is so much more likely that it can be fixed rather than everything being a complete headache. Thoroughly enjoyed that one there. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching.